Good day and welcome. Today, we're diving into the world of energy in cells and batteries. Most devices in our homes use batteries as an energy source. Here's a question to get you thinking, why do some devices use more than one cell or battery to work? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Stick around until the end for some fun, thought-provoking questions to test your understanding. Challenge yourself and see how much you've learned, it's a great way to build confidence. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss our weekly uploads. Let's get started. Devices, machines, and appliances needed an input of electrical energy to make them work. We will be learning more about electricity and energy. Electricity is part of our lives. Many people depend on it to make their lives easier and more comfortable. The factories that process materials and manufacture goods use electricity. Our cars, buses, and taxis use electrical systems. It is hard for us to imagine what life was like before electricity. Energy can be stored in cells and batteries which make things like torches, cellular phones, radios and toys operate. Even cars need batteries to work. Batteries come in many different shapes and sizes. Imagine you are playing with a toy car that needs power to move. You put something inside it to give it energy. These are called cells or batteries. But what's the difference between them? A cell is a single unit that produces electricity. It's like one small power source. When you put one battery into a remote control, you're using a cell. A battery is made up of two or more cells connected together. It's like combining several power sources to make a stronger one. A flashlight that needs multiple batteries is using a battery made of cells working together. More cells give more power. Sometimes, one cell is not enough to power big things, so we combine cells to make a battery that can do more work. Here is a fun fact. Even though we often call a single cell a battery, like when we say, I need a new battery for my toy, the correct term for one is a cell. A battery is when two or more cells are connected together. As we have already seen, a cell is a single unit that produces electricity. A cell that is usually used for a portable electric device is called a dry cell. But how does a dry cell look like on the inside? Well, a dry cell consists of an outer case and a carbon rod in the center of the cell. The carbon rod is a good conductor of electricity. This means that electricity passes through it easily. Copper wire is another good conductor. For a cell to work, chemicals inside react and are converted into electrical energy or electricity. Cells and batteries contain chemicals which react with each other to form charged particles. These particles have energy that is waiting to be transferred. Because of this, we say cells have stored energy. As we have already seen, we can join several cells together to form a battery. A battery is usually a collection of cells connected end to end. A car battery needs a lot of power to start the engine because it has to get many parts moving at once. To make this happen, it has six large cells inside. Each cell is like a small power source on its own. When these six cells work together, they produce enough energy to start up the engine. A cell or battery has a negative and positive end. These ends are called the positive terminal and the negative terminal. If these terminals are connected with wire, the charges can move along the wire. The negative end is shown by a minus sign while positive terminal is shown by a plus sign. We can use their energy to do things, for example to light up a bulb. Materials that allow electric current to pass through them easily are called conductors.
safe battery use and disposal means handling batteries carefully and throwing them away properly to protect people and the environment. Batteries contain chemicals that help them store energy, but these chemicals can be harmful if batteries are damaged or thrown in regular trash. Let us look at this in more detail. Disposing of batteries and cells safely is important because they contain hazardous chemicals, like lead, mercury, and cadmium, which can harm the environment. When batteries are thrown away improperly, these toxic substances can leak into the soil and water, potentially polluting our ecosystems and endangering the health of animals, plants, and people. Safe disposal through recycling centers allows these harmful chemicals to be managed responsibly, helping protect our environment and future generations. Batteries power many devices we use daily, such as remote controls, flashlights, toys, clocks, and phones. But when a battery is dead, it has no more energy to operate a device and must be disposed of or recharged if it's rechargeable. Rechargeable batteries are a great choice for reducing waste, as they can be reused many times, saving money and creating less environmental impact. Non-rechargeable batteries, however, need to be safely discarded after use to prevent pollution. Safety is another crucial reason for handling batteries with care. Throwing batteries into a fire, for instance, is extremely dangerous because they can overheat and explode, causing injuries and releasing toxic fumes. In appliances, switches also play an essential role by allowing us to control when they're on or off, helping save power and prevent accidents by ensuring devices aren't active when not in use. By understanding these safety and environmental considerations, we can make responsible choices in our use and disposal of batteries. We've come to the end for today. Today, we explored how cells and batteries provide the power needed to make appliances work. Before we go, try answering these questions before the answers appear on screen. Feel free to pause the video as you go along, this section is important for consolidating what you've learned. In our next video, we'll dive into circuits and circuit symbols, the language of electricity. Be sure to check out the link in the description to watch more videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss our weekly uploads. Thank you for watching, and take care.